liquefied petroleum gas LPG or cooking gas is now beyond the reach of the average Nigerian, as many have turned to charcoal or firewood. A kilogram of cooking gas is now 625 naira or more, depending on the location, forcing many household and eateries, especially in urban centers, to seek alternative means of cooking. Now, despite huge reserve, Nigerians grown as cooking gas prices now keep soaring. This will form our major discussion today on Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. A forex allocation, fuel subsidy, import index, medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper rounded the news on business this week. Here are the highlights. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Godwin Emefili, says the Apex Bank will consider approving foreign exchange for customers with legitimate demands that exceed transaction limit as long as such application meets stipulated requirements. This is as the Apex Bank had insisted that it would no longer allocate dollars to Baruda Shurnge operators who then sell to criminals and terrorists who buy weapons that are used to hurt Nigerians. Emefili was giving the assurance following various complaints by various customers customers that the $5,000 transaction limit as stipulated in the current Forex policy is inadequate and may not meet their actual needs. Petrol consumption in the country jumped from 55.59 million litres a day in April to 72.07 million litres per day in the month of May. This shows that in the month of May, petrol consumption in the country was 16.48 million higher than the consumption in the month of April. This also means that within the period, the country's daily consumption of petrol by 29.65% between April and May. The management of the Nigerian LNG Limited has said that the marketers did not have enough infrastructure to take up its liquefied petroleum gas supply. The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association had said that the major cause of the rising cost of cooking gas was lack of adequate supply. The marketers claimed that the foreign investors underestimated demand in the Nigerian market, resulting in marketers venturing into importation of the product. They advocated that the government should let the LNG supply more gas to market to reduce the cost. The All Commodity Group Import Index on average grew marginally by 1.07%, driven mainly by products of chemical and allied industries, wood and articles of wood, wood charcoal and articles paper making materials, paper and paper board in the second quarter. The National Bureau of Statistics disclosed this in its report titled Commodity Price Indices and Terms of Trade, Second Quarter 2021 on Wednesday. It stated that the all Commodity Group Export Price Index averagely increased by 0.72% due to declines in the price of chemical and allied industries, plastic rubbers, and articles thereof and minerals product. The Synod has passed the 2022-2024 mid-term expenditure and physical strategy paper, retaining all the assumptions and projections submitted to it by the President, Mohamed Buhari, in July. The Red Chamber retained the exchange rate of 410.15 per dollar proposed by the executive and approved the projected gross domestic product growth rate of 4.20%. The Senate retained the projected inflation rate of 13% fiscal deficit estimated of 5.62 trillion naira. And those were the roundup of business news. Now the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited says marketers were unable to offtake the full 450,000 metric tons of liquefied petroleum gas LPG allocated to the Nigerian market by the company due to various factors. The marketing manager of the NLNG, Austin Ogbogbo, said this while speaking to journalists in Lagos, 
Obobo says the NLNG is not responsible for the supply shortfall of the LPG, also known as cooking gas, and a consequent price hike across the country. Who or what is responsible? We're now being joined by the group Chief Operating Officer at Thrift Oil Limited, Bolahon Oloje. There are many thanks for joining us on Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa. Yeah, good evening, uh, Justin. Uh, a, a quick point of correction, I am no longer the Chief Operating Officer for uh, Swift Oil. All right, uh, points uh, noted. I uh, will just uh, refer to you as an economist there. Now, let's uh, get into the business of the day. Despite a proven estimate of 206.53 trillion standard cubic feet of natural gas deposits in Nigeria as of June 2021, the price of cooking gas has surged higher beyond the reach of Nigerians, with five increases recorded in three months. How do you explain this anomaly? Um, it's, um, it's a mix of a few things. Um, number one is uh, has to, the, the, the real problem has to, the, 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 the primary problem has to do with the supply problem. Then you can come to the FX problem on the other side. Uh, the supply problem is further complicated by the infrastructure problem. So LNG provides um, some of our, a, a chunk of uh, the, the uh, local consumption. But this local consumption, whether it is coming from LNG or even if it is imported, requires certain uh, uh, infrastructure. Number one, you have the storage facilities. These are very sensitive products. They have to be stored under certain conditions in an appropriate environment. Number two is the transport infrastructure. So there is a storage infrastructure, which is a problem. There is a transport infrastructure, which is another problem. That is, that, that is part of what is affecting um, the, the price that, that we're beginning to see or that we see from time to time. There is also the, uh, the, the complexion of the fact that it seems as if the demand in, in other parts of the world, Europe and the rest of them, has extended a little bit by virtue of a sustained cold temperature. So uh, that, that is also part, part of the problem. But I think, I think that part is, is minor. The issue of infrastructure compounded by importation. There are infrastructural issues now because LNG is not providing 100% of what we need in this market. There are various figures that are out there. Some must, sometimes LNG say they provide up to 80%. There are market watchers who think they don't provide up to that volume. So the rest of what the market needs is imported. When you import, then you deal with the FX-related issues. We all know how uh, uh, Naira has depreciated against the dollar consistently over several months in Nigeria. So anything that involves foreign exchange was to be likewise affected. This, this, these are the uh, mix of uh, factors that are giving rise to the price increase we're seeing in the market. All right, well, let's just analyze some of the figures that we saw this week. Now, the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency, the PPPRA, recently reported that the volume of LPG supplied in August fell by 20.5% to um, 85,264 metric tons compared to 107,000 uh, supplied in July. Uh, what should Nigerians expect in the coming months now? I mean, for them, they might be thinking of using kerosene or Others are thinking of using uh, maybe charcoal or even firewood. So what do we expect to see in the coming months? It's, it's difficult to say exactly. Um, there are a few things that are beginning to happen with them. Number one is as the price goes up, a segment of the market has, will have affordability, uh, has affordability problems. So that segment of the market will no longer be able to buy. They just leave the product. They go for alternatives. Alternative like kerosene or firewood or whatever that alternative is to them. So that that category, that segment of the market will, will affect the volume of LPG that will be consumed in the, in the, in the, in the next month. Um, the other part is the ability of CBN to fund the importation of this product. 
Uh, I, I want to believe that because this is a priority uh, policy of the government, that the CBA will make the money available. But even when the money is available, the fact that it is expensive uh, might also affect the volume that people might be willing to bring in to complement what is coming from the Nigerian Liquid Financial Gas Company. So it is difficult to say, but let's watch that space. If the government readily provides funding, uh, uh, FX, for all the importers to be able to import, uh, we might see a situation in which the market is flooded and maybe the price will come down a little bit. And some of the people that got out of uh, that market because they could not afford it might come back into the market because of, of the price uh, uh, decrease. And that might increase the consumption. But if that does not happen, we should expect that there will be a sustained decrease in the volume that we consume as certain categories of consumer get out of that market. All right, uh, that is not really what most Nigerians would want to even hear right now. But let's um, talk more. We have sampled opinions of some Nigerians. Um, they have indeed uh, gave different uh, you know, reasons for all of that. Uh, some have said that uh, it's um, the taxation element of that's the reason why, you know. Uh, some say that 7.5% tax on imported LEG implementation is the cause. Others have attributed it to VAT. But what exactly is the true picture? How does the 7.5% tax on imported LPG affect the price? Uh, definitely any charge that comes into that place will affect the ultimate price. The fact is, 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 is a contributor. But I don't think it is as significant as um, the impact of the foreign exchange in itself. Um, the, there's also the PPRA charge anyway, uh, and there's an administrative charge that uh, PPRA introduced some, sometime in September 2020. Uh, PPRA, PPRA uh, they, it has been argued that, look, this agency is not adding any value to the process, and nobody knows why you should have the right to determine, uh, to, to, to charge anything and add to the cost in that particular space. Uh, that is there, no doubt about that. I don't think that um, that is going anywhere. I don't think we're going to have a situation in which we go back to uh, a, a, a subsidy regime as far as that product is concerned, mm. uh, we, or we go to the subsidy regime. As far as that, so the VAT has come to stay. It's not about to go away. What we need to pay attention to is how we can deal with the infrastructure constraint on one side, uh, FX provision on the other side. All right, uh, let's just try and get into some other issues uh, still concerning LPG and gas in, in Nigeria. Sometime in April, the federal government announced plans to inject five to 10 million uh, liquefied petroleum gas cylinders into the market in the next year. It said it was to help improve safety and deepen LPG. So what is the essence of all of this if ordinarily we've not been able to put our infrastructural you know, deficit you know, in order and that we're still importing you know, you know, gas when we have huge deposits here in Nigeria? Um, the provision of uh, gas cylinders uh, is, is taking care of another part of the entire mix, and that is the cost of switching. So if I've been using kerosene before, I have the, the stove and other apparatus that are required to, come to use kerosene. If the government is trying to persuade people to cross over to another energy source, one of the things that we have to deal with is the switching cost. A major switching cost is the cylinder. There is a the cost of cylinder, then there is the uh, safety issue if people have to go for substandard cylinders. So the intervention in that area by government is to deal with that problem, that switching cost matter, to ensure that people will be able to afford a cylinder and that the cylinder will have the right level of safety and we deal with uh, 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 the switching costs. But after the switching costs, there are still all these other uh, issues that we have to deal with. 
All right, well, you, you will agree with me that Nigerians um, over the years have um, actually, even the average ones, you know, have actually stopped using you know, the kerosene stove to uh, charcoal and firewood, and they have appreciated and moved on to using the LPG. One would have thought that uh, with the NLNG and all the uh, other you know, policies that we have in place in Nigeria, that we should not be having the issue of uh, gas shortage, as it were, and of course, the increase in prices. Well, uh, there, there's a problem with planning in, in Nigeria, and we have to admit that. Um, a, a whole lot of things are done in silence. That is why you will have a situation in which we are planning for switching costs. We want to be able to, uh, 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 to take care of people's switching costs. But we're not addressing the infrastructure. We are not addressing the reason why uh, investors might not be coming in to provide those infrastructures. Is there a pricing issue as well? We're not dealing with that. So these are the complications, and I think it's a planning issue. Normally, when, if, you, if we're serious about this policy, we must look at all the contributing factors and make concrete plans to deal with this contributing factor rather than taking them in silos and dealing with this problem one after the other. I remember that way back um, 2017, 2018, um, we, we were trying in the organization I work for then, one of the things we were trying to do was to build a storage facility because it was observed that NLNG will provide gas in Bonny and that gas will first of all be moved to Lagos from where it is now moved out of Lagos to other parts of Nigeria. So you can imagine that the gas that was produced in Bayelsa first of all got to Lagos before going back to Rivers. It does that look like an anomaly? That is an anomaly. But we had that, those kind of situations um, which is showing the extent of poor gas infrastructure across the nation. So whatever the government needs to do to create the right environment that will encourage private investors to invest more in the gas infrastructure, both the storage and the transport infrastructure has to be addressed. Without that, we continue to, you know, from time to time, run into troubles with the issue of rising of, of, of cooking gas. And that policy of government will not succeed as well or as fast as we will have known it to succeed. All right, and well, just before we we'll let you go now, fine, you have talked about uh, you know, investment and all of that, and of course the issue of planning. But the average Nigerian wants to be sure that uh, he uh, goes to maybe the, the depot and that uh, he can buy maybe a 12 kg you know, a cylinder for as little as maybe 2,000 uh, naira. When do you think in our history that we can get to a point where we can actually use these renewable sources and ensure that uh, we are not... Uh, you know, damaging the, 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 the climate and the environment, you know, when we fall back to all of this uh, charcoal and firewood. Do we, the question right now would be, would we get to a point where gas supply and the price can be very minimal to the extent that even in the hinterlands, that would be the major source of uh, gas or fuel for cooking? I think we can get there. And, and the reason is this. Even in other parts of West Africa where they do not have gas, the penetration of LPG usage is higher than Nigeria. So the percentage of the populace that is using gas to cook in Ghana or in Cote d'Ivoire is more than Nigeria where we have the gas. So it means that it's a matter of, you know, getting our acts together and be serious about doing this. I also believe that the recently passed PIA might have an implication that will help us. Um, the, the petroleum industry bill affects not just uh, uh, PMS or, or crude oil, it also has implication for gas. And one of the most important parts of that act is that it's, it's a, it, it liberalizes that segment and courts the private investment to come in. There is more confidence to come in and put more money in that segment. Once that happens and the infrastructure is there, the structure is there, Nigerians will be able to benefit from uh, a product that is at their backyard, as, as it were. Not that we have to go and import it again when it is right. just down the road in Pakistan. All right, thank you so much uh, indeed for your time and of course your input concerning this issue of uh, cooking gas hike as Nigerians uh, actually 
filling the bite. We do appreciate your time. And Bola Hon, Oloja Day. Thank you very much. You're welcome. As we end the show, we'll would leave you with this feature on the Out of Home Advertising Conference organized by the Lagos State Signage and Advertisement Agency, where Governor Babajide Songolu said his administration is poised to leverage technology to become Africa's modern economy. Here are the highlights. See you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. Outdoor advertising sector today is witnessing unprecedented growth in diverse forms and Lagos State is no exception. Speaking on the theme of the event, the roadmap for the growth of signage and out-of-home advertisement post-COVID-19 in Lagos State, Governor Sawolu, represented by his deputy Obafemi Hamzat, says his government will support in enhancing infrastructure by providing data to enhance capacity of small and medium scale enterprises. We'll be able to have back all of data to our data centers that support traffic management, data collection for urban planning, and of course policing our state. Our smart city plan will have a major impact on all sectors of the state economy. I also play a major role in enhancing the capacity of private businesses to flourish, create more wealth and employment for our young people. Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tunji Belu, says the conference will create a better roadmap for the out-of-home industry to foster effective collaboration with all stakeholders in the advertising sector. I have no doubt that this conference will create a better roadmap for out-of-home industry. I am particularly looking forward to the this, to discussion on fostering effective collaboration with all stakeholders in the sector. This is the key ingredient for good sectoral relationship. Managing Director of Lagos State Signage and Advertisement Agency, Ade Damola, says the main objective of the conference is for the government to gain the confidence of stakeholders so they can invest in policies and programs of the agency. Our new roadmap is therefore directed at driving efficiency and stimulating investment, investment capital for the industry. We are combining the use of technology and newer sources of finance to stimulate sectoral growth, develop new routes for acquisition, and ensure long-term investment for outdoor advertising infrastructure in a manner that will make the industry attractive to investors. The consensus by speakers is that the event is apt and regulators, especially LASA, must gear up to meet consumers' need by deploying technology.